What is All Souls Day? What is it all about? Why do we celebrate All Souls Day? And when do we celebrate All Souls Day? Why is this important? Perhaps some of these questions are questions that we ask. You see, every year on the second day of November, we celebrate All Souls Day. Now, another name for this day, this celebration, is the commemoration of all the faithful departed. That is, all those who have passed away, all those who have died in faith. Now, on All Souls Day, we commemorate all of the faithful departed, all those who have died. And it is customary for family members to visit cemeteries and to put flowers on the graves of the deceased family members and relatives. I remember some time ago as a priest, I was in a parish and on this day, on the second day of November, the commemoration of all the faithful departed, it's a special day uh, filled with visitors and we'd go to the cemetery and in particular pray for our deceased families and relatives. We pray for them and we go and we visit cemeteries. We visit them, especially on this day and during the whole month of November. Now, in some cultures, like the Hispanic culture, for example, they call this day the Dia de los Muertos, which means the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead celebration is a commemoration. It's a remembrance of all those who have passed away in this world right here. And according to the Latino culture, for example, death is viewed as a part of the natural human life, right? That human cycle where you have life and death and then life and death. Indeed, death brings sadness. That is true. And of course, too, in some cultures, you know, even though death, there is this relation to sadness, there's also a sense of joy in the celebration because for the Hispanic culture, they believe that on that day in particular, they can join those who have passed away in this great festivity, in this celebration, right? And the celebration includes music, parades, candy, uh, masks, and other forms of entertainment. And, you know, family members would gather together and they would remember and pray for their deceased relatives. Now, as Catholics, we celebrate this day by going to Mass, visiting our loved ones in cemeteries. And by the way, if you visit a cemetery, you know, and you pray for the dead, in addition to other prescribed conditions, as I'll mention in a little bit, you'll receive an indulgence, right? a plenary indulgence for which you can offer for a deceased family member or relative. You see, we pray especially for all the faithful departed, especially the souls in purgatory on this day, on the second day of November, in the hopes that these people in purgatory will one day be able to join the saints whose feast day we celebrate yesterday, right? All Saints Day on the 1st of November in heaven. Now, the celebration of All Hollow Tide, right? That is Halloween, All Saints Day, and then All Souls Day, all these three are referred to as All Hollow Tide. Now, this marks the three-day celebration. And to quickly recap, Halloween means All Hollows Evening, the day before All Saints and then followed by All Saints or All Hallows Day, right? Hollow means holy or saint. And then finally you have the next day, All Souls Day, the commemoration of all the faithful departed. Now, here I like to just reflect a little bit more on All Souls Day. And I like to begin by talking about eschatology. Perhaps some of you may have heard of that term. It's the study of the last things. Right? And it's one of the branch of theology which studies the end of a person's life, right? Death, judgment, heaven, purgatory, hell, and the likes, etc. Now, let me ask all of you a very direct question. Are you afraid of death? Be honest now. Are you afraid of death? I would suspect that many of us are. After all, we're all afraid of the unknown. But here's the hard truth. Death is real. All of us will die. We're all humans. 
and we cannot live forever. And so in an indirect way, All Souls Day is a reminder to us about our final end, death, but then not so much death, what happens after death, that there is life after death. And so, you know, sometimes in our own lives too, we have to think and reflect and ask the question, well, why are we always so angry in life, uh, filled with regrets, living in the past, etc., when in the end, it don't matter so much because we all end up dead anyways, right? But there's more to death in the Christian faith, that death is the entry into new life. And so with that, all that being said, I want to share five very important things about All Souls Day. All Souls Day. Number one, on All Souls Day, we remember all the faithful departed. Chances are we've lost someone we've loved, right? Whether it's our grandparents, whether it's our parents, maybe a family member, our relatives, our friends, we have seen someone die before. Now, perhaps some of us were even present when these family members die, right? Or we're dying. And we feel very sad and we have anguish and we don't know what to do, etc. Well, you know, in times like these, we feel as if death is the end of everything. But that's where Christian hope comes in, you see? Because we all believe in life beyond physical death here in this world. So here's the key point. As Christians, we pray for all the faithful departed. That's important. So on the feast day of All Saints Day, we celebrate all the saints in heaven. And then on the following day, we celebrate all those who have departed, right? It's a reminder to us that the saints in heaven, those in purgatory, and all of us, there is this connection between all three, right? The saints in heaven, the faithful departed, and then all of us. Now, I think this is something very interesting. If you go back to the early Christian church, right, you visit tombs like the catacombs in Rome, for example, you see inscriptions and signs everywhere that says, pray for the departed, right? Pray for those who have died. And, you know, there's so many um, writings and prayers for all the faithful departed. Why? Because they believe that prayer helps and that in time, these people who have died may see the light of Christ and experience the beatific vision forever. Point number two. Point number two I want to make is when we pray for all the faithful departed, we offer Holy Mass for them. Right? On this day, we pray for all the faithful departed uh, through the Liturgy of the Hour and then also through the offering of Holy Mass. You see, Christian prayer transcends space and time. When we offer prayer and other good works for the dead, for example, we believe that our good works, right, all the good things that we do, we can offer to those who are in purgatory. On days like All Souls Day, for example, it's proper for us to turn to the liturgy of the hour and pray the office of the dead. It's also proper to offer Holy Mass, particularly on this day for all the faithful departed. You know, the, the Requiem Mass, that is the Mass for the Dead, is used. And based on tradition, sometimes you see the color black, although in more recent time, it's usually the color white that's used. Um, those who have been to a funeral recently, like for example, if you have been to a funeral recently, you know it's a very sad time, and it can be a very difficult time to say goodbye to those you have lost, right? Uh, it's sad, family members, friends, they pass away. But whether it's a funeral or All Souls Day, it helps to remind us of our humanity and that death is a reality. You know, priests, me included, offer Mass this day all Souls Day, for all the faithful departed. Our prayer comes from the office of the dead, and I would encourage you to attend Mass on this day, All Souls Day, to pray for your family members and relatives who have died, right? The highest form of prayer is the Holy Mass, and have Masses said for your loved ones, especially on this day and during the month of November. Point number three. Point number three I want to talk about is purgatory the place of purification. Now, earlier I mentioned eschatology, you know, the theological study of the last things. Now, part of the study of eschatology has to do with purgatory, the place where the faithful departed go to be purified so that they can enter into heaven and join the saints. Now, when I mention the church, I'm not just referring to the church here on earth, right? Here in this world here, but I'm also referring to all the saints in heaven and to those in purgatory. Now, purgatory is a long subject, and we can spend a lot of time talking about that. 
unfortunately we don't have time in this video here but you know simply i want to just uh, point out a few things we pray for the dead and we pray for all those in purgatory and we simply believe that in our prayer and our, our offerings that they may be able to use them to enter into heaven sooner and so let us pray for all the faithful departed and especially for all those who are in purgatory point number four point number four i want to share is about all souls day you see the day of the dead is a great reminder to us of our end that every one of us will die death is a reality no i have said that a couple of times but it's important for us as we celebrate this day to be reminded of that you know there is a 100 percent certainty that all of us will die none of us live forever everyone will experience death and if you visited a cemetery recently you'll see how it's so peaceful and so quiet out there there's really no arguing nothing right just peace and tranquility and i remember some time ago as a as a parish priest you know i used to go out there and do gravesides and last rites and sometimes it can be very difficult for family members who are there to see their loved ones lowered down into the ground and you know all these questions come up is this it is this the end is there more to death than just this right and christian hope says yes there is there is the resurrection there is the newness and the fullness of life imagine for example your spouse or your parents being lowered down uh, into the grave right into the earth it's difficult for us to see but it's important for us to be reminded that that will be us you and i someday will be lowered down into the ground and that death is not the end because we look forward to newness of life with great hope which then brings me to point number five point number five and the final point i want to talk about on all souls day and that is to visit a cemetery particularly during this month and especially between the first day and the eighth day of November. Here's why. Based on tradition of the church, all of the month of November is dedicated to All Souls Day. And especially between the first day of November and the eighth day of November, if you visit a cemetery, you can pray for your deceased families and relatives and receive an indulgence, a plenary indulgence, which you can offer for them or for anyone in purgatory. So to receive an indulgence, uh, you go and you visit a cemetery between the first and the eighth day. This is the plenary indulgence. And you do three things. Right? You go to mass, receive communion. You uh, go to confession, be in a state of grace. And you pray for the intention of the Holy Father. All those three conditions and you receive a plenary indulgence on th the first through the eighth of November, which you can offer for deceased family, relatives, loved ones, etc. Now, Again, these are five points I want to share about on All Souls Day. We commemorate all the faithful departed. And I've said so many times already, please pray for all the faithful departed. You know, every time when you go to Mass, every time, there's always a prayer said during the Eucharistic liturgy that we pray for all the faithful departed that in, uh, and we entrust them to the love and mercy of God and to offer prayers and Masses for them each day. May God bless you.